Whether you are ready or not, this is the guide for GoFest 2021. I'm Alex Gummy, aka Chiclay, and welcome to Pokemon Go Ahead. Oh my god! Back to back! Ooh. Another shiny! Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Before we talk about what you should be bringing and what you should be working on before GoFest, we have some announcements. This one is not the most important one, but we did do some trainer achievements since that was a new feature in the raid system or the raid stadium. We got a couple achievements such as the following. Hardest hitter. We also got Final Strike, like a lot, because I was invited to a lot of Galarian Zigzagoons. By the way, keep inviting me to Galarian Zigzagoons. I still need the shiny. Then we have the big one. Use Waylord as your first buddy. Just use Waylord. Traveler, someone invited me outside of the country. And finally, I took hours to find a good fit, but I got the style. Save it. I had to dress to impress. I mean, if they had a suit and tie in the game, I would probably dominate in that category. But since we don't, I gotta rock with this outfit. Another announcement, we are still currently at the Bidoof Breakout event. This is kind of like the second half of the event. We're still currently at triple XP for everything we catch in the wild, especially Bidoof. And more Bidoof are starting to appear more often. So, it's starting to look like we're having better odds of getting a shiny Bidoof. Also, by the way, I got a shiny Bidoof on the second day. I just thought I'd share that. It looks pretty cool. It's all golden. Tomorrow, Tuesday, June 29th, not only that we're going to have four times XP, but every Bidoof that you're going to catch is going to learn Ice Beam instead of Thunderbolt. And I'm going to be leaving to drive to Las Vegas from Tuesday at 8 a.m. and I should probably arrive to Las Vegas around like 4 p.m. or something just in time for the Apom Spotlight Hour which is from 6 to 7 p.m. Mark that on your calendars. If you're lucky you may get a shiny Apom. Double Stardust when you catch an Apom so make sure that if you're looking for some Stardust drop a two star piece and just capture a lot of Apom and make sure you drop at least two lucky eggs during this Spotlight Hour because if you catch a palm, you get eight times XP. Because you're catching Pokemon during the Bidoof breakout, even though they're not Bidoof. I mean, you still get XP. Wednesday, June 30th, it's going to be the Regigigas Raid Hour. This is the second to last day that Regigigas is going to be in Tier 5 Raids until we hear something about whatever Legendary is going to be out next. By the time I'm recording, there's no announcement for the month of July. We don't know what's going to be in the raids before GoFest. We don't even know what's going to be in Mega Raids. We don't know anything while I'm recording this. So we'll probably get something closer to the end of the month, which is, well, <laughs> right now. Note that the very last day of the Bidoof Breakout event is going to be Thursday, July 1st at 8 p.m. And do note that Regigigas will be leaving in raids on July 1st at 1 p.m. I'm pretty sure it's 1 p.m. So we, when we're in Vegas for the last set of the week, we should probably figure out what the next Legendary is. We might do a couple remote raid passes. Unless it's a really terrible Legendary, then we'll probably stick with Galarian Zigzagoon Raids. Again, please invite me, because I really need a shiny. Thank you. And finally, Tepig Community Day, Saturday, July 3rd, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., Triple Stardust, if you catch anything, you get three hour lures and three hour incense, just like the Gibble Community Day. And ladies and gentlemen, we will definitely not be doing Community Day because I'll be on the road back from Vegas to home. But if we stop somewhere to like Tonopah, Hawthorne, or BD, or wherever, hopefully we get service and we catch a shiny. If not, we might have to ask Chris to trade us one of the best Tepigs that he has to offer. So hopefully we can come, lucky friends, before then, so then we have a good tep pig. You know what I'm saying? Well, then they also have snapshots, too. But we still need a shiny regardless. I just did a trade with a friend in the summit in Reno. Shout out to X Britney X. I think her name is Brianna. But she offered me a shiny Mr. Mime. Yes, a shiny Mr. Mime, a rare shiny regional that she was offering to trade. So thank you, Brianna, for the shiny Mr. Mime. It is a two-star. I'm not going to complain. This was the one we've been grinding a lot for for Kanto Tour. 
So thank you for the shiny. I really do appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and jump into the guide, which is the main part of the video, the guide for the Go Fest weekend of 2021. Just to briefly break it down, day one of Go Fest is mainly focusing on catching Pokemon within the habitable hours, such as Cave, Desert Mountain, Ocean Beach, and Jungle. And Sunday, the second day of GoFest is primarily focusing on the raids. A lot of legendaries, pretty much every legendary that's been in this game right now is going to be out. We're talking about Pokemon categorized in the Thunder Hour, the Wind Hour, the Frost Hour, and the Lava Hour. Not listed chronologically because that's the incorrect order, but those are the hours that are going to be happening throughout the second day of raids. Because <laughs> there's going to be at least nine legendaries per hour. Yes nine legendaries except for frost frost has like three regional legendaries so in general nine per hour which is pretty crazy i bring this up because we have to talk about what items and what you need to do with your storage before go fest yes before go fest like you need to probably start like right now so what you're gonna need to do is spin Pokestops and gyms constantly so you have enough Pokeballs and berries. This is very important because you're gonna need to use a lot of Pokeballs to catch everything. I mean, if you don't have a Pokeball, what are you gonna catch? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you're better gonna be off to get a thousand Pokeballs, 500 Ultra Balls, and like as many Great Balls as you possibly can. You may want to use a thousand Pokeballs because if you're somebody that has a Go Plus or a certain kind of Go Catcher like the Gotcha or whatever, this would be very useful if you just want to walk around and you just, just turn the thing on when you're doing other things or if you just want your phone out of the sun, whatever. Just make sure you have a lot of Pokeballs and then have those Ultra Balls ready if you encounter a rare shiny and then have golden raspberries or raspberries to... Just to Make sure that you're insured to catch it so it doesn't run away. Not that a shiny would run away. <laughs> Unless you're JT Gilly with a shiny love disc. You know, I'm not going to get started. I'm going to be nice. Now, yes, you are going to get some raid passes. At least, like, 21 for free on Sunday. But I think you guys should have some spare remote raid passes if necessary. If you don't feel like raiding on Saturday, you know, don't feel pressured like, oh, I have to raid for Dino. I mean, we will raid for Dino, but if we don't use our free raid pass on Saturday, we could save it for Sunday, and then we can get 10 free raid passes from spinning what's, what's so, what's so. So make sure that you have some remote raid passes for Sunday. Like, have at least five ready if possible, at least maybe like three if possible, you know, before you can get the 11 from the free bundle, which contains three, and then at least eight for the time research. So have some remote raid passes set. So when the raids begin, you can just go ahead and get started with the raids. And then if you're out of remote raid passes, then you get the free bundle. And then if you're out of those, then focus on the time research. And then you could just go ahead and just spin to get some in-person raids going on and then if you like don't have any raids passes or whatever i don't know what else to tell you when it comes to the second day when you're raiding if you have a ticket you will get extra 10,000 xp so that equals 2,000 well 20,000 xp so if you have a lucky egg down that's 40,000 so if we have eight hours of this raid day and lucky eggs are going to be running for 30 minutes we do the math, make sure that you guys stack up to 16 lucky eggs for day two. And then probably like 16 for the first day. Because if you need XP, you may want to drop some lucky eggs. So if you do like a lot of raids with 40,000 XP, because remember, you're dropping lucky eggs and you have the tickets, you're, you're going to get a lot of XP and you're going to level up. And, and you'll thank me later. Yeah. You also want to make sure on the first day of GoFest that you have lure modules and make sure that you communicate with your group wherever you decide to play Pokemon Go. If there's an area where there's a lot of Pokestops, 
communicate with your group and be like, okay, I'm going to drop a lure module here. I will drop a lure module there. Okay, you drop that one back there. Like scatter around, communicate, use Discord, Messenger, WhatsApp, GroupMe, whatever source that you guys use best. And just communicate with each other like which ones we're going to be dropping so that all lures are dropped at the very beginning of the event. So make sure you have lure modules so you're ready to go. And last but not least, make sure that if you're eligible to or if you're able to have Poke Coins, make sure that you guys constantly spam by getting as much storage as you possibly can for both items and for Pokemon storage space. And make sure that you guys carefully go through every Pokemon in the storage and transfer anything that you don't need so then you have some space to get everything from GoFest. Because if you have no more space and you have something on the incense, that's not good news. You're going to have to transfer like really quickly before you tap on it and see if that unknown on the incense is shiny, right? So you want to make sure that before the event starts, clear your space so then you have at least probably one third of the space of your storage empty to have Pokemon in there. And then make sure that you have enough storage for all the items for this event. You're going to be wasting a lot of Pokeballs. So you got to make sure that you have a thousand, at least a thousand Pokeballs. And then just enough Ultra Balls so you can use those for any Shinies or any rare ones. So definitely use Ultra Balls for sure, and then have a thousand in case you want to use your Go Plus. Great Balls! Just have as many as you could possibly have, you know? Because they're Great Balls. So that's literally everything that you need in the game. But you're going to need a lot of things in real life to be ready for Go Fest. And that depends on where you're playing Pokemon Go. Go Fest of 2021. So here are some things that you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need a phone charger and at least some battery packs so that you can give some juice to your phone because you're going to be playing for eight hours each day. So this baby better be healthy and fully charged for the entire day. Also, make sure it's at 100% before the event starts. Like, don't do anything too crazy. Don't be playing Pokemon Go until 10 a.m. Because you need as much juice as you can to last. I learned that the hard way when we were out last year at Idlewild Park. Which, by the way, Chris and I are going to be out playing on the first day of that event. And then we'll be in Carson City on the second day for raids. We made it. We, we, just, we just talked through it. You guys are going to most likely be outside during this event. So a couple things you're going to need. You're going to be hydrated. Bring water. I have a hydro flask. I like to fill it up with water. I like to put ice in it. And then the night before, I just put it in the fridge so it's nice and cold. So in the morning, I grab it and it's good for the entire day. You could do the same thing. Just put some water bottles in the fridge or anything to drink such as Gatorade and Powerade or anything with electrolytes because you got to stay hydrated throughout the entire event. You also want to make sure that you have sun protection, such as sunscreen. If you have a handheld umbrella, that works out as well. You may also want to carry some bug spray. The mosquitoes are kind of bad this year, so... I mean, I got bit like 12 times on the leg. I didn't mean to use it in a singular, but it is one leg. Yikes. So make sure that you have bug spray, because you don't want to deal with bugs. So have some kind of repellent for that. And then make sure that you have a hat and sunglasses because if you're going to be outside, it's going to be hot, okay? We had a hat on. We had some sunglasses on last year. Oh, man. We knew how to fight the sun. <clears throat> if you guys are planning to do the entire eight hours, I would recommend planning ahead on what kind of snacks you want to bring. Granola bars are best because they don't perish. I would definitely recommend if you want to make a sandwich or something, you have like a lunchbox with a little cooler pack. Just make sure that you guys plan ahead what to eat. Um, definitely buy a banana the day before so then you have a fresh banana or some kind of fruit. You know, you don't want to eat the fruit that was left out for a few days before. You need something perishable and easy to carry. So make sure that you have something to nibble on in between the events. 
I know that when I was going out playing Pokemon Go Fest last year, I snuck in a couple granola bars in between recordings and in between hours of the event, and that was very beneficial. So make sure that you have some snacks. It's very important because you're going to be hungry. If you guys are planning on using your Go Plus or a Go Catcher or some kind of thing like a gotcha, make sure that you guys carry extra packs of batteries, whatever the appropriate battery is. Another tip, you could probably change the battery to a new one the night before, so then you have a fully charged Go Plus and you're ready to go. So then you're, you know, not stressing out if your thing dies or something. Just make sure that you have that ready. Make sure that you guys dress up for the appropriate weather. Like, don't wear a jacket, obviously, or a sweatshirt if it's like 900 degrees outside. Just wear like a light shirt right? And again, hat, sunglasses, sunscreen, hydration, right? And then make sure if you have packed everything in your backpack, make sure that you pack a lot of stuff. If you're planning on vlogging during community day like myself, make sure that you charge your camera to 100% and then don't record anything until within, let's say, like 15 minutes when you're outside before the event because you don't want to overheat your camera, whatever kind of camera it is, and make sure you have extra battery packs for your camera because you gotta do a good vlog if you're wanting to record. So make sure you have batteries. And last but not least, make sure you have a hand towel because you may be sweaty. And then this is kind of dependable, depending on where you're at, just in case, you know. I mean, you're gonna be outside the majority of the time you're going to be outside the majority of the time, so you're going to be okay. But if you're going to be planning on playing indoors, just be very mindful of the COVID-19 guidelines. Whether you are vaccinated or not, make sure that you have a mask just in case. Because if you want to play inside to avoid the sun, and some places are like, hey, you know, like, we even know that the guidelines are passed, you still got to wear a mask. Whether you're vaccinated or not, just follow rules. Make sure you're aware of your surroundings. And most importantly, make sure that you talk to your friends or your group, deciding on where you want to play Pokemon Go. My boy Chris and I, we communicated, like we said, day one of GoFest, we're going to be at Idle Wild Park in Reno, Nevada. And then the second day, we're going to be in Carson City. So I think it's at the Capitol because that's mostly where the raids are at. But if you're in those areas, Make sure that you hit up with your boy, Chris, and myself. Um, I'll probably bring like a Sharpie just in case if you guys want autographs or if you guys want to exchange friend codes. Well, not with the Sharpie. <laughs> oh, my God. But anyway, that's. I hope this is very helpful. If I'm leaving something else out with this raid guide or the GoFest guide or anything for both first and second day, let me know in the comments below, like, oh, Alex, you should have mentioned this, or you should have mentioned about this in the game. Let me know in the comments below, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, if I don't see you again, it's because I'm in Las Vegas. I'll be vlogging, but I'll probably be posting the video probably on 4th of July or the day after, because who knows what's going to be happening. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.